Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Weiner, and I've been practicing integrative medicine for 20 years. During much of that time, I've helped patients navigate the difficult terrain that is the inflammatory bowel. In my clinical practice in Portland, Oregon, and during years as a clinical supervisor at the National University of Natural Medicine, I've been committed to an integrative approach, combining conventional and complementary strategies to manage IBD patients. In this video, I'll be sharing my experience in discussing the role of an elemental diet for the dietary management of patients with inflammatory bowel, or what I'll be referring to as IB. But before I get started with this, what exactly is an elemental diet? Webster's defines elemental as something existing as an uncombined chemical element, something fundamental, simple, and uncomplicated as an elemental food and of or relating to a great force of nature. Remarkably, the word describes this dietary management strategy and medical food that is fundamental, simple, uncomplicated, and by virtue of its composition, nutritionally complete to meet human biological needs. Macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats are broken down to their elemental forms of free-form amino acids, simple digestible carbohydrates, and fatty acids as medium-chain triglycerides then combined with essential vitamins and minerals to create a chemically defined solution that is proximally absorbed. It can be delivered through a nasogastric or nasojejunal tube, most often in a hospital setting, or for outpatients, a powder is added to water to constitute a beverage. Elemental diets have been available for decades but have been underutilized as dietary management for patients with IB that is usually presented in a model that offers two basic dietary strategies. Enteral nutrition, feeding directly through the GI including oral feeding, or parenteral nutrition, the delivery of nutrients through blood. An elemental diet is one form of enteral nutrition, along with semi-elemental and polymeric liquid diets. The elemental diet protocols studied and utilized are categorized as exclusive, 100% of calories, or half-elemental, partial calories, up to about 50%. What is missing from dietary management is a recommended whole food diet for IB, which technically is a type of enteral nutrition. It's not represented here because there's no agreement about its role. I'm inserting it into the model along with many of the different so-called diets commonly used by integrative practitioners to indicate its importance in dietary management. In fact, to be blunt, it's really married to the elemental diet, completing it to extend the benefits derived from the elemental diet with an ongoing strategy to dietarily manage an inflammatory environment. It's important to remember that second to organisms comprising the gut microbiota, dietary components are the most common luminal antigens, proven to alter gene expression, modify enteric flora, and modulate inflammatory reactions. This has been demonstrated for components of the Western diet that appears to play a role in the etiopathogenesis of IB. Improving nutritional status is known to support normal immune function Modifications of dietary intake also affect the makeup of the microbiome. Particularly, the high total fats, the omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids, and the high mono and disaccharides. Unfortunately, on the intervention side of the dietary research, data is scarce for specific therapeutic diets. Except for one, the elemental diet, which remains the most studied strategy in dietary management. It started with this man biochemist W.C. Rose, who developed the first elemental diet for humans in the 1940s. After experimenting with animals, Rose fed his graduate students at the University of Illinois a solution of cornstarch, sucrose, butterfat, corn oil, inorganic salts, and a mixture of purified amino acids. He added a liver extract to supply vitamins and yet undiscovered nutrients, plus some peppermint oil for flavor. Then, he demonstrated that his volunteers could be maintained in a positive nitrogen balance for weeks without complications. A few years later, Crohn's disease was described by this man, Dr. Burl B. Crohn. In the earliest reports of nutritional therapy, a liquid diet evolved from Rose's formulation 
resolved malnutrition in patients with Crohn's disease. In the process, the diets had a direct effect on successfully filling nutritional gaps resulting from the disease. This was finally well documented in the 1970s with 13 patients using dietary management of an elemental formula 17 times over 22 days. All but one not only demonstrated weight gain, but improvement in biomarkers. In 1990, a 10-year retrospective study confirmed elemental diet effective in the dietary management of 96 of 113 cases of Crohn's disease, that's 85%, regardless of age, sex, location, disease severity, or associated complications. Yet, the same study indicates that the elemental diet did not significantly induce long-term improvements. Relapse appears somewhat inevitable when patients return to a normal diet or do not proceed with a maintenance intervention. A 2016 review put the relapse rate at 50% within six months when patients return to a normal diet. But don't despair. The plot thickens. When the research broadens to include an elemental diet followed by a personal food exclusion diet or continuation of some degree of an elemental diet, it becomes an effective long-term strategy in the dietary management of patients with Crohn's disease. Returning to a normal diet just isn't in the cards to successfully implement ongoing dietary management. In maintenance studies for Crohn's disease, which look beyond short-term use of the elemental diet to ongoing use for a part of caloric intake, we see reductions of post-operative recurrence and the elemental diet being celebrated as a promising dietary management approach. Taken as a whole, the elemental diet research through the present day has demonstrated its favorable impact on altering the body composition, leading to weight gain, and restoring nutritional status. Let's now turn to the subject of how the nutritional implications of the elemental diet are understood in the context of the pathophysiology of IB, where host genetic factors set the stage of susceptibility with 164 associated gene loci. A second factor represents environmental influence, including smoking, geography, stress, psychological elements. Added to this, various antigens, including medications, and finally, the significant antigenic role of dietary components. The third factor, the microbiota, is currently the key focus of the pathogenesis discussion. In health, the microbiota of 100 trillion organisms constitutes a stable ecology until genetic predisposition combined with multifactorial environmental triggers destabilize this ecology to provoke the fourth factor, an immune system reaction involving a breakdown of innate immunity and overreaction of adaptive immunity that leads to inflammation, ulceration, fibrosis, and ultimately nutritional losses. One large study observed undernutrition in 68% of IB patients. Why so much nutritional loss? This can be explained by, at the bottom end, excessive diarrhea, blood, and mucus at the top, reduced food consumption due to poor appetite, nausea, vomiting. At the mucosal level, dangerous protein-losing enteropathy, which along with other losses, increases nutritional requirements. Malabsorption results from inflamed mucosal surfaces or from developing SIBO. Absorption is further decreased due to removal of absorptive surface area with fistulas, strictures, and in patients with resections. Decreased GI secretions that liberate nutrients from food add to the absorption problem. And IB medications that affect nutritional parameters are the icing on the cake. The bottom line is, enough nutrient loss leads to protein energy malnutrition that alters body composition and sets up damaging micronutrient deficiencies associated with systemic complications. This makes protein energy malnutrition one of the most important factors linked to poor outcomes. That's why it's so important to elevate nutritional status, making it a key clinical objective. Ordinary nutritional supplements are usually inadequate to replete acute IB patients. They may be poorly tolerated, undigested, or remain unabsorbed. An elemental diet's unique formulation of monomers make it ideal for nutrient repletion. 
This alone goes a long way in answering the question, why an elemental diet for the dietary management of patients with inflammatory bowel? But it doesn't explain fully how an elemental diet can lead to decreased inflammation, which begs the question, by what mechanism does the diet act? The answer is complex, and it's best to back into the question by itemizing the elemental actions of the diet observed in the various studies. Proximal absorption leads to early assimilation of bioavailable ingredients. Improved nutrient status is demonstrated. Decreased mesenteric adipose tissue in Crohn's disease. Bowel rest. Decreased luminal exposure to antigens. Alteration of the microbiome. Reduced malabsorption. Decreased gastric pancreatic and biliary secretions that contribute to intestinal permeability and bacterial translocation across membranes, and overall a modified immune response and degrees of mucosal repair. These actions of the diet have been observed, and yet it has not been possible to isolate how the consumption of the diet, the starting point, leads to the end result, mucosal healing, when observed. We can try to connect the actions, and it might look like this. But these efforts are defied by various studies. For example, it was once thought that nutrient status explained anti-inflammatory effects. But a study showed decreased inflammation occurred before improved nutritional markers were measurable. When decreased polymers were thought to be the key, studies showed that a polymeric diet was as effective as the elemental diet. Reviews of elemental studies have failed to confirm a cohesive chain of causes and effects. But better than trying to isolate a single mechanism, we can point to a confluence of parts like interlacing gears in a complex system that together impact the complex pathogenesis of IB. That, at least, is how I visualize the diet's potential actions as a management tool one that has been staring us in the face since William C. Rose fed the first elemental concoction to his graduate students, and Crohn's patients showed signs of mucosal healing from liquid enteral feeds. It makes you think of what Sherlock Holmes always said to his apprentice Watson when something finally became clear. After having been overlooked, he would say it was elementary, or should we say elemental? To conclude our discussion in the spirit of the word we began with, I want to answer the question, why an elemental diet for dietary management of patients with IB, in the most elementary and elemental, meaning basic and fundamental way. The diet is easy to implement and dispense with more palatable products emerging for increasing patient compliance. It is well tolerated and is evidence-based, with significant research supporting its use exclusively or as a partial or half-elemental diet. Given the less-than-ideal efficacy of conventional care for an inflammatory bowel, the diet's use can be complementary, supportive, and flexible. The elemental diet's ability to increase nutritional status renders it useful to influence outcomes. And as we discussed, it couples well with whole food diets. Finally, the proposed mechanisms of action of the elemental diet makes its application a reasonable and rational approach to dietary management of inflammatory bowel and a useful tool for integrative physicians.